good day and welcome back so this is javascript section 2 so javascript is chapter 5 section 2 and we are going to be talking about um, the birth of a program and so what i'd like to show you walk you through is how um, software engineers programmers think about programming and the way we do is we start off by having an idea of something we want to code, for example. And a question we want to ask, some answers to, and we come up with some steps either on paper or we already have it in our head, and we write that in um, the computer instructions for that. Now, depending on how elaborate the program is, we might we, we tend to go through a design phase where you sit down, you write out some diagrams, you go talk to some colleagues, you have it reviewed, and so on. But let's just say something very simple. Then you just um, write the corresponding computer instructions. And that is what you're going to learn in JavaScript. Uh, what are some of those instructions? Now, we are doing HTML programming, and that is a type of programming also. And the instructions there were declarative. We were saying what we want, and then we let the computer figure it out. In this case, the browser figure out. That's a special application. We'd say make something bold or italize or something, or create an input field, and then we just say what we want, and then the browser created one for us, right? Um, and um, JavaScript, um, it's more interpretive. Um, it's not declarative. And so um, you're going to have to know a little bit more. Uh, there's a little bit more structure to it than um, HTML. But nevertheless, uh, what, let me just go through some of the things, the common things that the, all developers have to do. So there's the idea of your source file, and um, then you, you know, write some computer instruction, and we call that code. You write some code. And then you feed that code into something called a compiler, and it converts it into machine language. Now, the code that you write, even though it's a computer, uh, it's in a computer language, it's not really something that a computer can really understand, actually. So the computer tends to execute what's called machine code. So that's yet another language. It's basically zeros and ones that a computer understands how to execute. And so the comp your code that's human readable, and it's done that way so it's easier for humans to write. It's faster to write that way. It's less error prone than writing machine um, code. And then there's this other special program called a compiler that takes your machine or your computer um, human readable source code and translate it or convert it in a way, compile it to the machine um, language that the computer does understand. And then that code now uh, is fed to the computer and the computer executes it. So if you fed the computer like your source code, it wouldn't know what to do with it. But if you fed it um, the machine code, then it knows what to do. And so what I'm going to show you and so you can see from the diagram here, there's these steps, right? You know, you write the code, you have a plan, you write a code, you uh, feed it to a compiler, the compiler produces a binary file, which is the zeros and one, and then you take the zeros and one and you feed it to the computer, and the computer executes it, right? Now, sometimes, because uh, we, we interchange and reuse the word program or code, so I can say I have source code, and that's my program, so I could say, hey, you know, can you review my program for me or my source code? And then after it's compiled and I have an executable thing, I'll still say, hey, here's this program I'm going to give you on a floppy disk or, no, nobody uses floppy disk anymore, but here, you know, I'm going to send it to you in email or whatever, this program. So even when it's in source form or the compiled form, we still would call it code. And it's still, and we might even say it's instruction, right? So don't let the word code or program trip you up because we might use code or program to represent it. Usually code is when it's in the source code form, but we can still call that a program. Here's my program, but it's in source code form. Or here's my program, it's already compiled, run it, you know, use it or whatever the case is, right? Um, and so one of the other things that has happened or can happen is that you can shortcut the cycle. So you write so code, code, you write the program, sorry, your source, you feed it to a compiler, then you get the output from the compiler, and you execute it. Um, but what if you could just write the source code and feed it to a program and get the result right away without having to compile? So the compilation and running is done, is combined, okay? So you write your source code, you feed it to a program, and it produces the output you want. Instead of you write your program, 
in source for you take that source code feed it to a compiler then take the output of the compiler and after run it so you notice the three steps there so what if you could combine the last two which is the compile and run and so that's what uh, we call um, those languages the languages that su uh, support that type of development they call interpreted language and javascript is one of them and python and there are a bunch of other languages and then they call them scripting languages like bash and so on but anyway i don't gonna get too too much into that because there's just too many so JavaScript is one of them. And so what I'm going to show you is an example of the two um, ways of developing, right? The traditional way of writing source code, compiling it, and then running it. And then the JavaScript way, which we're going to do, is we're going to write source code, we feed it to a compiler, to an interpreter, and the interpreter immediately produces the output. So if you look at, let's look at the C program I have here. And I'm, we're not going to really learn C, so just trust me, and I'm going to write some C. And so here's my C program, it's a hello world. And all it's gonna do is print hello world when you run it. That's all it's gonna do on the command line. It's not even graphical, it's a you know, text-only program. And so here I have some stuff and I'm not gonna go through what it is, just trust me that it's correct. And so I wrote, I'm gonna write it in our brackets editor. I'm gonna save it to you know, the directory for section, um, in a folder for um, section two and then I'm going to go to the command line and I'm going to compile it. To compile the C code, C++ code, I'm going to use the GNU compiler. It's called G++. G++. And so I'm going to say I want you to compile the source code and the output or result, the machine language instruction, I want you to write that to another file called the binary file. I want you to write that to a file called hello.exe. The exe there is a extension just meaning executable on the mac it doesn't really matter what the extension is on linux it doesn't matter either windows kind of matters okay so um i'm just saying um i give give this output a, a name i the, the result a name if i didn't specify a name it would give it a that out but that would have been boring so anyway so now i'm going to compile it and then i'm going to run it and to run it i'm just going to type the name and say run this program in the current directory that's why i put the dat forward slash and then Bam, enter and notice the result. That's it, right? Exactly what we expect. We said we wanted a program that spits out hello world. And the way we did that was in C++. Now I could have written, get the same result with a C program. I'm not gonna do it because I wanna make this video a little bit short. If somebody wants to see that, let me know and, and I'll do it too and add it to this series. But eventually, if you stick through me on this entire journey that I, I sort of um, laid out ever since, uh, early on, we can eventually do C and C++. And then the final thing is I want to do the same thing in JavaScript just to show how the interpreted languages work. And so here I'm going to go back to brackets and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to say console.log and then I'm going to put in, um, so it's a function, so I put open and close parentheses. You haven't learned that yet about calling functions or anything, but that's how you call a function. And then I'm going to put in quotes, double quotes, hello world, the same string I want to get print out. And, and that's it. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go back to the command line and I'm going to use node. Remember we installed node.js in section one. This is the reason for installing node was so that we can have an interpreter to run our JavaScript code. And so I'm going to type node space. And you can think of this as almost like if I was typing G++ space and my source file name, right? Well, now I substitute G++ and I type node. And instead of typing hello.cpp, I type hello.js. And I don't have to say write my output to some other file because the interpreter, since it's node is the interpreter, it's not going to compile it and spit out some, the result it, into another file for me to run. It's actually going to produce the result. So when I enter here, you're going to see, bam, this is the result. And let me do one other thing um, just to show you. And, you know, if I... You know, look at the type of files. So you can see it's still an ASCII file. It's not a binary file. Um, unlike the hello.exe file, which is typically told it's a file specifically for the Mac. If you compile, if you're doing this on Linux, it's going to tell you it's a ELF file or something. If you're doing it on Windows, it's going to tell you whatever. Uh, by the way, Windows doesn't have a command like file. So sorry, Windows people. But anyway, um, let's have our program calculate 3 plus 5s for us. So I'm open it again. I'm going to add some text, 3 plus 5, you know, what is 3 plus 5, and save it. 
And notice at the end I put comma, so I put a string. So there's one argument to that function I want to print out, that string. The second argument to that function is whatever the, the result of 3 plus 5 is. And I'm going to say print that out for me. And now when I save it and I rerun it, node space hello.js and I run it, I get the result of 8, right? So that proved that all, um, this code is being executed by the interpreter and I'm getting my result. And notice the difference here. I only had to compile it first. So interpreter language makes for a little bit faster development since you don't have to compile and then execute. You just kind of feed your source code into the interpreter and you get your result. So you could think of the interpreter as behind the scenes doing the compile and then run, okay? Combining the two steps. And so, okay. You're saying, Ferro, we're, we're doing more and more programming now, and it's been a while, and you did all this HTML and CSS, and now you're moving into JavaScript. Where's the code so we don't have to retype all of this? Well, good news. I've put the code up on GitHub, and in the very next video, I don't want to make this video too long. I was going to show you the end of this video how to get it, but I don't want to make this video too long. So, in the next video, I'm going to try and file this up in like a day or two. I'll try to do it tomorrow, or by Tuesday, but today's Sunday. Anyway. I'll get you the next video, put out the next video, and I'll show you exactly how to get the code, okay? I pretty much recorded the video already. It's just to, um, you know, edit it and put it together that I need to do. So um, look for that video um, showing up pretty soon to show you how to get the code. Um, you have the bracket editor already. You have the git install um, video from way up front. So if you haven't installed git, and you want to be able to access the code. Now, if you're not planning on using Git, and you're planning to access the, use the code, um, um, then you don't have to worry about it. You can still go to github.com forward slash Verol, V-E-R-I-O-L, forward slash learn dash computer dash programming. You type that all in into your web browser, and it takes you to the code right now. And you can browse it online and then type it up that way, if that is if you're not using Git. If you're using Git, you're going to want to see, I'm going to show you how to clone it to your system and have the, the code there. All right. Um, so that's it. Thank you and see you soon.